Uh, the thing that, that I that I wanted that I want to say before I go into the message, uh, I want to I want to give this day to to Christ. I want to I know that all the things that are going on and I understand that, but God is the only somebody that can fix what is going on. So I want us all to put our trust in God and put our confidence in Him and 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 sort of today move away from all the news reports, the negative news reports. And let's hear the good news today. Let's hear the report of the Lord and then let it stimulate us to pray. Let it stim stimulate our confidence in God again to rescue this whole, rescue us out of this whole situation in the name of Jesus Christ. So I really want to acknowledge Jesus. I want to give him his just due. I mean, we need to do that every day, but in particular today because we're acknowledging his resurrection. Um, and so I don't want to discuss the, the, the virus. I don't want to discuss anything that's going on with it. As a matter of fact, I have, ticked, I have turned off the news. I don't watch it as much. Every now and then it'll come across and I'll see it and I still rebuke it and I root it and I curse it every word that I don't agree with, I don't receive. And I pray that we'll do this, you'll do the same because we are children of God. We do have the word of God in our mouths and we do have power. And I believe if we came together in unity in prayer and speak and we would speak God's word, we would see a difference in our situations. That's always been the case. But I want to talk about Jesus. I want to talk about what he's done in his life. I mean, that holy life he lived through all the sacrifices, through all the challenges. I want to talk about Jesus Christ and, 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 his, and his death, how he, how he took the abuse and the rejection and the hurt and the pain and the disappointment, how he stood those tests, how he made it through on our behalf, how and even in his, in his, in his death, when they, when, they, when they did the things he did, the Bible said he never said anything. I mean, he, he didn't complain because he understood his call. But then I want to talk about as well his resurrection. He, in, in the resurrection, this is what happens when, when, when Christ got to a place of, in this earth first. He lived according to the will of God. He lived a life that, were, that had to meet the requirements of a lamb of God, a sacrificial lamb. He had to live holy. He did that. Imagine living in this world with a human body and living completely holy. Well, he did that. Then when you talk about him getting to being promoted and, 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 and being able to make it to the cross, which was a promotion because that was a part of the, the, the plan of God for him to do. So he, he qualified by living holy. Then he qualified by taking those beatings that he, that he took. I mean, he, he, because the lamb had to be prepared a certain way. So, you know, he's, he's amazing. He's, when you think about all Christ has done on our behalf, it is amazing. But what I want to talk about today is this. Jesus Christ pressed humanity's redo button. In other words, he started humanity all over again by doing it the right way. Living holy, allowing himself to get on the cross, allowing himself to be beat. All those things were required for humanity to start over again, for us to have another chance at life, have another chance at a relationship with God. So what did he come to do? I mean, what, what did he come to do? When you look at the scriptures, the Bible is very clear. Over in John chapter, chapter 19, verse 30 says, so when Jesus had received the, the sour wine, he said, it is finished. And bowing his head, he gave up his spirit. Those words, it is finished, is, they are very powerful. It is finished. In other words, he had done everything that was necessary. He had gone through all the challenges, all the temptations, all the trials, and he had done everything. And when he got to this point where he was able to say that it was finished, he was saying that on our behalf because God sent him to restore mankind back to him. He said it's finished. So, so what was finished? What was finished? He came for a couple of reasons. He came to glorify God. He came to do God's will. And he came to destroy the works of the devil. He came to glorify God. He came to do God's will. And so, and he came to destroy the works of the devil. I'm going to talk about that today. But I want everybody encouraged. I want you to be really, really encouraged. I, want, I pray God will give you a spirit of excitement and enthusiasm. Because this is a great day. Over in John, he says, John chapter 17, verse 4, he says, I have glorified you on earth. He's talking to the Father. This is Jesus. I have finished the work which you gave me to do. In 1 John 3 and 8, he said, He that committed sin is of the devil, for the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. So when he said, God, I finished, what God sent him to do was to destroy the works of 
the devil. What are the works of the devil? And look at that. So Jesus came to earth with a purpose. Everything Jesus did was, uh, was in accord with his purpose. Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. When Jesus said it is finished, he had done everything that was required. That's redundant, but it's necessary. We need to hear it. It's finished. The greatest work of the devil was in the Garden of Eden. In the Garden of Eden, when, 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 he, when he talks about what, 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 what God had planned was, he had planned for man, when he created man, man was created to glorify God, to worship God, to praise, to walk in sync with God, to walk in peace with God. Well, in the Garden of Eden, and, and, and man was doing that. He, he, God was there, you know, and, and man was there. Man was innocent. He had no thoughts of certain things, but God gave him some instructions, specific instructions. He said, look, this is what I want you to do. He said, I want you to really enjoy life. I want you to be fruitful and multiply, but you cannot do one thing. He told him one thing he could not do. He could not take from the tree of, of, of the knowledge of good and evil. He could have every other tree, could do anything else he wanted to do. Well, man compromised, he did that. So when man did that, he changed the dynamics of, of our lives because you gotta think about Adam, who he was, and Eve, they were the first family. So when he, when he disobeyed God, when he, when he disobeyed God, he released the spirit of Satan. That's why Satan is called the prince of the, of the earth. Now, what is the spirit of Satan? The, prince, the spirit of Satan is disobedience. It's disrespect to God. It's dishonoring God. The spirit of Satan is disobedience. It's disrespect. It's dishonor. You remember who Satan was or who Lucifer was? He was the angel in heaven who, were, who would lead in worship. He was the angel in heaven who would lead worship. He became jealous and, and began to try and compete with God. And he got kicked out of heaven. And a third of the angels came with him, which are demons. So his spirit was in the earth. God's spirit is in the earth in man. God gave man dominion and authority. And so man could have kept that or he could have compromised that. Satan, Satan had already gotten kicked out of heaven. So he came to man. He came to Eve and started talking to Eve. He said, look. He said, now I know, you know God didn't, didn't tell you to do uh, certain things, but, but, but I don't know exactly, and this is what he said, and I'm summing it up, he didn't, he didn't know exactly what God told him, but she kept talking, they kept interacting. And, and, and what actually happened was this, and I want to give it to you, it's in Genesis chapter 3, and, and it's in verses uh, 1 through 6, it says, and, when the, and, and the woman said unto, unto the serpent, well, let me, let me do verse 1, now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord had made, and he said unto the woman, hath God said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto, unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the tree of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden. God has said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you will die. And the serpent, and the serpent said unto the woman, verse 4, You shall not surely die. That's what he does. He, he's always trying to tell us what won't happen if we do something. But listen, this is what I want to also make clear as we talk about Jesus destroying the work of the devil, and this is the work of Satan. Satan doesn't have, um, he's not omnipresent. He's not everywhere at all times. This is what did happen in, doing the, in the Garden of Eden. He released something in Eve, which is spirit of disobedience. She took it to her husband, spirit of disobedience, and that's what changed the dynamics. It's not that Satan is in every, the devil is in everything. He's everywhere at all times. He's in major stuff. But, but, but man, in that, in that fall, we do stuff through birthrights. We're in sin through birthrights. We, we gain in our birthright the nature of sin, the nature of iniquity. A lot of times we try to give the devil all, oh, the devil is doing this, the devil is doing, no, 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 no. He, he don't have omnipresence. He's not, he's a created being just like we are. He don't have the authority you think he has. Do you remember, here's a, here's a thought. And I'm going to get back to this. You remember when, uh, when Job was really faithful to God and committed and he stayed that way? The Bible said that the angels gathered to get instructions from God, and then Satan was in the midst, or Lucifer was in the midst. And God said, what are you doing here? He said, well, I don't have anything to do in the earth because, see, generation from generation to generation, once he released that spirit, man carried out the nature of sin. We, we, you know, we, we carry out the nature. With, through Adam, we carry out the nature of sin. So God said to him, he said, look, have you seen my faithful servant, Job? This is what the point is, Satan is not who you think he is. He's just a creative being. He said, yeah, I've seen him. He said, but as long as you've got a hedge about him, I can't touch him, blah, blah. This is what God said to Satan. He said, look, go touch him. He said, don't bother his soul, but go ahead on, go touch him. 
Don't, don't, don't bother. Don't bother. So, so what that should let us know is this, brothers and sisters, is as I'm, as I'm talking about how Jesus destroyed the work of the devil, Satan's work was manifest. We, we got in cooperation with the devil and became agents against God. We all are created beings. So, so sometimes we give Satan too much credit. Somebody, somebody will say, well, the devil made me do it. He didn't make, he didn't make her do it. He didn't make her do it. He conned her into doing it. He persuaded her. And that's the work of the enemy. He's always trying to persuade us into doing it. Well, he persuaded Eve. Eve went and took it to her husband. And then we got away from God. Sin means to miss God. Miss God. God, God said you will surely die. God, God meant you will be separated from life and eternal life and be separated from me. So, so, so that's what happened. It, it, it's the, work of, the work of the devil, the real work of the devil was the deception of mankind. The deception of mankind, the cunning, the craftiness to deceive mankind. And sometimes you'll say, well, Satan is called in sickness. Today. No, no, sometimes your eating habit, maybe it might have started with, with your great-grandmother, great grand and then there was an anticipation and a fear. But man, we do a lot of stuff because you got to remember, Satan is not God. Satan is a created being. He's not, he's not, so it's some things that we can reverse through Christ if we, if we want. Satan is not, it's some things that he has done. It's some, now, he went after Jesus the same way. But remember this, I, I want you to have this. I want you to have this power in your hands that Satan is not as powerful as you think. Now, when man, see, man had thoughts and dominion. When he sinned against God, all these things were released in the earth. All these things were released in the earth. I want you to hear that. When man sinned against God, God gave man a domain and authority over it. So when we talk about Jesus coming and all the sacrifices he made because man had messed up so badly, Jesus restarted the whole humanity. He, he, he restarted. How did he do that? Well, over, 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 in, the, in, the book of, over in the book of Luke, chapter 4, it, it, it really gives it where, where Adam initially failed the test that were brought before him. Satan conned him and he said, he did the same thing, tried to do the same thing with Jesus. He went to Jesus when Jesus had fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, and the Bible said he was yet hungry. Satan went to him. Now, now, if Jesus had gone for this, true enough, humanity couldn't have been started over again. But he went to Jesus, and this is what he said to Jesus. He said, look, he said, now, he, the Bible said he was hungry. He said, if you're the son of God, he said, go ahead and take those stones and make them, make them, make them bread. Well, Jesus had enough sense to realize that, okay, I ain't that hungry. I'm not going to do anything you tell me to do because that was his real test. In order to restore man back to God, Christ had to be absolutely obedient. Now, we, we, we can't be who Christ is, but we can depend on what Christ has done to have a good relationship with God, to see our lives in victory. So, so he, 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 he's, he's wrestling with Jesus, and he, the Bible says he goes on, and he, he takes him up, and he takes him up on this mountain, and he says, look, and he's always trying to get us to do stuff. Uh, if we now, let me tell you this. Now, Satan is not as busy because he's not omnipresent. He can't be with everybody at all times. Some things are just generational. Some things are just um, uh, hearsay, spreading of bad news, spreading of habits, spreading of this. Was, it, some of it don't have. It's just in the beginning he caused a lot of ha havoc, and then when you see him again on the scene, really, it's really with Jesus. Where he's trying to do the same thing again because he, he knew he had put man in bondage with man disobeying God and, and man was in his flesh and man was subject to the earth and subject to the world where before the world was subject to man and the earth was subject to man because of God. And so what Jesus did was he came back and he said, okay, he said, okay, now, now, now here we go again. His goal was to, to restore man back to God, to re, reset, that, reset that button for humanity to start over again. He did it. He did. He, when Satan came to him, he said, look, look now, you go ahead and jump down and God's going to give his angels charge over you. You shall not dash your foot. He was giving him a half truth. See, you got to know the Bible in order to defeat the works of the devil. Not, not Satan, it, it, the, works, the works of the devil is the fall of mankind, the fall of humanity, the nature where we are. It's a sinful nature. And it's in a, the, the Bible says, he don't say nothing about the devil when he gets in Galatians chapter 5. He says, the war is between the flesh and the spirit, the Holy Spirit. So, so of course, he, you know, he's, he put a lot of things in motion, but man has to take responsibility. God gave him, he said, look, this is what I don't want you to do. You can have all of this. But what we have to do is we have to take responsibility for ourselves because if we keep blaming it on the devil, we'll never come out. We'll never, God gave us, gave us our lives to live and whoever we're persuaded by, by makes a difference. 
Wherever we are persuaded by makes the difference. Satan have agents. You remember there was a man that was um, that was um, in, in, in the in the grave in the graveyard, and 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 and, and, and the scripture says that he, he he couldn't be tied up. He was just he was just wild and wild and out there. Well, the, the Bible says that when Jesus questioned him, he said, he said, what is your name? He said, they said, he said no, my name is Legion. Legion, for we are many. Those are demons. Demons are different little spirits. Those are thousands of demons. They're different. That's not the devil. That's what man does in disobedience, and they allow spirits to get in their lives and make them contrary to God. It's a spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. So anyway, I want to get back to this because I want to get done. So what Jesus did was, and back to the, now I'm back to, the, to where he was being tested. And Satan had already given that second test. He said, look now, you, you go ahead and you, 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 you jump down and guys don't give his answer. Jesus said, no. He said, no, no, no. God, thou shalt not tempt. The rest of that scripture was, God, thou shalt not tempt the Lord. That God, Satan was using scripture on Jesus. And, 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 and Jesus said, okay, let me, let, me, let me finish it for you. Thou shalt not tempt. So he didn't jump. So he took him up. The Bible said he took him up over Jerusalem. And he said, look, if you fall down and worship me, if you, he said, if you'll fall down and worship me, he said, what I'll do is I'll give you all this. It wasn't his to give. He's a liar. He's like, Satan is always promising. He prom and we're in that mindset. When you're worldly and you're in, in, in this earthly vessel, the deception runs through mankind. It runs through mankind. It is, it is, and so, so there's a, but anyway, so what he did was he said, no. And the Bible say, I'm not going to, he said, I'm not going to do that. He said, thou shalt serve the Lord thy God and him alone shall you serve. So every time the Satan, so Jesus, what he did was when he passed those tests, he, re, he reset our lives forever. He reset the whole humanity. Whether folk accept Jesus or not, they have a chance to accept. Now, the key to that is you have to accept Jesus. But the key, the key to what he did was he, 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 he reset all of humanity. Jesus reset, he gave us a new chance. He gave us a, re, a new chance. Some things I want to share with you very quickly here. Um, now, as a result, and I want, to, I want to sort of dig into it a little bit, as a result of what, what Adam did, uh, it, it did put us in, 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 in humanity, it, the whole, whole humanity into bondage. It put us in sin, according to Romans chapter 5, verse, verse, verse 12. And, and this is the way it reads. It says, wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin. And so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Now, now I want to do that again because I want to, it says by one man's sin, sin is to disobey God. Death is to be without God. So when we, when we sin then, then we enter into a separation from God. So we could not be all God created us to be. See, God created us to, to love him. He created us to worship him. He created us to, to praise him. He also created us to have a good life. He also created us to, to manage this earth. He gave us dominion and authority. Well, we dropped the ball in Adam. We dropped it in Adam. We just completely, it just went all chaotic. The whole earth went bizarre. The whole system went bizarre. And so what Jesus came to do, he came, he came to restore it. And so with, with what Jesus did, what Jesus did, he counteracted what Satan did. Now, Satan's biggest work, or the demonic spirit, biggest work is to counteract God, to get mankind to counteract God. Let's say if God said, love your enemies. Well, Satan will say, you know what, I can't love them because they don't like me. I don't want to have anything to do because they don't love me. I don't want, no, 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 no. When, when you're with God, in order to, to have the victories that God has ordained for mankind, this is what Christ has given us the opportunity to do. We can say the opposite. I'm going to love them because God loves them. Amen. Now I want to look at, at something. Before we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior and believe in him, because we have to do that in order for us to come from underneath this fleshly spirit, this thing that, that keeps us such in bondage. Uh, before we accept Jesus as Lord or, or live and believe in him, we, we, we were, before we accepted him, we were under the full effects of the works of the devil. Ephesians chapter 2. I want to go there with you. I want you to go there with me. Ephesians chapter 2. I want to read this to you. In the past, you were, you were spiritually dead because of your disobedience and sin. At that time, you followed the world's evil ways. You obeyed the ruler of the spiritual powers in this earth, which is Satan. The spirit who now controls the children, the spirit of disobedience, are the ones who disobey God. 
Now, this is the English translation. In verse 3, it says, actually, all of us like them lived under the control of the enemy. We were doing whatever we wanted to do. But God's mercy is so abundant, verse 4, and his love for us is so great that while we were yet spiritually dead in our disobedience, he brought us to life in Christ Jesus. That's all the handwork of God. When we look at the cross, when we look at the resurrection, when Jesus talks about it is finished and he said, well, I came really to destroy the works of the devil. This is what I want you to hear. Jesus, Jesus, with everything that he did, he did for the Father. He did for he did because that was the instructions of the Father. We we say, well, you know, Jesus did this well. Well, no, he really did it for the Father. He loved the Father. And then we benefit from it. Jesus came and lived. He defeated the devil. Then he began to live a life that was necessary that, that we should learn from. So we can understand being children of God. When I say he, re, he restarted humanity, in that restart is our understanding of what he has done. What, what has he actually done for us? He's given us an opportunity to have life again, to have worship with God, to have true fellowship with God, to have intimacy with God. That's what we should be celebrating. Of course, you know, we still have temptations, we still have challenges, because we still have on flesh. But we've been baptized in the Holy Spirit. When Jesus got off the cross, he said, look, I'm going to do something for you. I'm going to go to the fire. He's going to send you some help. You're going to need some help because I've, what I've done is I restored you, but you need to understand what it's all about. So I'm going to go back to the Father. He's going to send some help. The help he sent is the Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, third person in the Trinity. He indwells us. What is his job? He's to teach us about what Jesus has done in our position in Christ, our restart in life now. You know, there are things that we can speak out, speak out of our mouths. We don't have to accept sickness. I know people don't agree with you except the sickness. That, because he, by, by his stripes, we are healed. And so that, you get into that and you can say, well, you know, Pastor, I do understand. It's just through generations and through the programming and the depthness. But it's a battle sometimes to come out. That's why we have the Holy Spirit. You have to ask the Holy Spirit to give you wisdom in every issue that is not in accord with God's plan for your life. Jesus has afforded us, in, for us that in his resurrection. Ask the Holy Spirit to help me to understand, to give me wisdom how to pray, to give me wisdom how to come out of this thing that Christ says, you don't have to be poverty stricken. I know, I know the poverty stricken people got mad. Don't be mad. You don't have to be. You don't have to be poverty stricken. But you have to ask, see, we've got the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, I was poor, so you wouldn't have to be. He meant in spirit as well as natural. But what do we, how do we get out of all of that? We talk to the Holy Spirit. We say, Holy Spirit, please help me. I don't want to be. Please help me. He gives us wisdom. Then we have to listen to the wisdom and obey. This is the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Our whole lives can start over again. Every one of us. It can start over no matter all the mistakes you've made. This is the resurrection. The resurrection is giving us new life. It can start over again. Our whole lives can start over. Do you want it? It's available for you. It's available for you. You don't have to be angry all the time and on edge all the time and how you going to create your wealth and all that. God said, I give you the ability to get wealth. You need to find out what the ability is. Holy Spirit will help you find it. You don't have to be at war. You can have peace in your home, but you have to trust the Spirit of God to provide that. You have to trust the Spirit of God. That's what Jesus has done for us in his, in his life and his death and his resurrection. That's what we should be celebrating. You, you don't have to uh, look at your children in dismay and, and afraid and sad and downtrodden. You can get on your face and turn, turn, turn it around. But you got to believe God. You have to do what the Holy Spirit teaches you to do. You can't just hop, well, they're going to do what they, no, no, it ain't gonna, that ain't going to work. It's the process. Jesus had to follow the process to give us a restart. We have to follow what God's divine order to give a restart. When you look at generational curses in your family, you don't want your children to, to fall upon it. And some have already fallen upon it. Reverse it. How? Get on your face and have an intimate relationship that Christ has afforded us in the name of Jesus Christ. Let the Holy Spirit teach you how to uproot that stuff. You don't have to be, you don't have to be miserable and sad and afraid and alone. God said, I'll never leave you nor will I forsake you. Christ has afforded us that in his resurrection. But we have to take advantage of it, brothers and sisters. We have to take advantage of that. What he, he, he's afforded us, even during this challenging time. 
This is the time now to really get in the presence of God and, and trust God to say, God, you know, I really don't know what's going on. Will you give me peace? Trust the Holy Spirit to give you peace. Holy Spirit, give me wisdom. Give me understanding. What should I do? You ain't got to run out there to prove something to something. Well, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to put me on the mask. I ain't going to put on no gloves. I ain't gonna, well, that's your prerogative, but if he tell you to do it, you ought to do it. I guarantee you one thing. If uh, Noah had come out of that ship a little bit too fast, it would be no more Noah. It wouldn't, mankind wouldn't have gone forward. There was instructions that were given that he had to follow. He had to wait until that bird came and told him that you can leave the boat. You, 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 we do foolish stuff out of our flesh, away from God. But they, you know, the government ain't God. I never, we never said he was. But God can use them to save your life. You have to humble yourself by the Holy Spirit. You have to humble you. We have to humble. Jesus has afforded us a brand new beginning and it's full of hope. It's full of inspiration, no matter what the challenges are. We have to take it, brothers and sisters. We have to learn what it's all about. We have to hear the Holy Spirit. We have to yield to the Holy Spirit. But listen now. I said that he restarted humanity. Now, everybody have not even accepted. Nobody, some people have never even heard of it. We, I wondered one time, I asked God, I said, God, why do people who are not safe celebrate Easter? Go and buy clothes and they do this. He said, because if they didn't, the rocks would. So I don't knock people for what they do and how they celebrate. As long as they celebrate, whether they know any better or not, because God has caused the rocks to cry out. God has done a great thing in Christ Jesus. We need to celebrate the resurrection of Christ Jesus. We need to celebrate his life. We need to celebrate, but it needs to be ongoing every day. It don't need to just be on this Sunday. So I've got a concern today. Although he restarted humanity, where are you? Where are you? What is your relationship? How much of it are you getting that he's provided for you? You can have it all. He said, I've got the keys to the kingdom. He's got the power. Whatever you bind on earth, it's going to be bound in heaven. Whatever you lose on earth, you can have it all. But will you go for it? How do I go for it if I don't have it? Well, the first step is this. You have to accept what Jesus has done on your behalf and on my behalf. We have to accept. How do you do that? Well, you say, you know what? I believe, God, that, that Jesus Christ lived holy. I believe, God, that he, that he came through a virgin's birth. I believe, God, that he was beat on my behalf to because, because of, of, of my sins. I believe, God, that he took those stripes so that I might be healed. I believe, God, they hung him on a cross to redeem me. They hung it. I believe he got on that cross, and when they hit him in the side, I believe, God, that he redeemed me from the curses of life, from the curse of death and sin. He paid the price that was required. I believe because he hung on the cross, every generation of curse can be broken, is broken, because I believe in Jesus. That's what you're saying when you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ. Confession ain't just, I believe in Jesus. No, I believe in everything you say he did, God, everything he accomplished, he fulfilled it. I believe. When you say that, then say, Jesus, come into my life. Come into my heart. Be my Lord and be my Savior. I accept you now, Jesus. I receive you now. And then expect for your life to be resurrected. Expect it. Then, you got to believe God has given you eternal life. He's confessed with the mouth of the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. Then God is raising you from the dead, from the dysfunction. Not, not just when you go, to the, you go through the grave, because the Bible said we're going to be, when the from the body to be present the Lord. I'm not talking about, I'm talking about now with that, all that dead activity, that dysfunction. You can't stop yourself. No man has been able to. No, no matter how deep and intellectual you are, how spiritual you are, how much of a preacher, teacher, pastor, even, whatever, you can't. You need Jesus. We all need Jesus. We need what he's done. We need to rely on that. So trust Jesus. When you ask him to come in your heart, believe he came in. And then say, Jesus, I trust you. Every day of your life, say, Jesus, I trust you. Jesus, I trust you. Jesus, I trust you. Every day. Holy Spirit, teach me that. Walk with me and teach me. I've given you something that's going to bless you forever. And if you already got Jesus and you're not fully benefiting from the resurrection, remember, it's a restart buddy. button. We start it now and say, Jesus, you know what? I really have been benefiting from all, from, from all that you afforded me. But today, 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 I want to benefit. Holy Spirit, help me to benefit. Oh, brothers and sisters, I thank God for you. I love you and I bless you. Let me tell you this. What we normally do is we, we do the offering. And I want to give you a chance to do the offering with us because uh, it's necessary. So let's pray over the offering. We're going to take the offering. I want you to be obedient in your giving. When you, when you love God, this is one thing you realize. You give God what belongs to him. The Bible said the tithe are holy. They belong to God. I believe that. It's blessed my life and turned around. I remember when I was out in the world. 
And I, and I couldn't give God that money because I had to give it to the dope man and the little man and everybody else. But when I started giving it to God, he turned everything around. Be obedient to God in your giving. You can't take a portion of the word. You got to take all of it. You got to take it all. So, so I want to give you an opportunity to give. This is how you can give to us. You can text this number, 678-661-5332. Then you can text in that once you, once you put the number in there. You can text G-I-V-E, give. Or you can also go to our website, twogcm.org. Twogcm.org. You can give through texting. I said that. It's G-I-V-E, but the number is 678-661-5332. So listen, I want to pray over your giving. Pray with me. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, we understand that you have compelled us to give. And so, Father God, we humble ourselves and submit ourselves. But as we give, we're asking that every promise you put with our giving or put on giving or obedience to you in the tithe and the offering, we receive those promises. Brothers and sisters, we got to expect God to bless our lives when we're obedient to his word. So, Father God, right now, every giver, glory to God, thank you, Jesus. We bless them. We encourage their hearts, Father, to be obedient, especially now. So much out here for us to have, but we got to release it. And when we do what you tell us to do, we're releasing your promises. Inform us, God. Open us up. Wake, up. wake us up for this blessed hour. Let us be obedient to you. Let us focus now. Let us walk in love, grace, and mercy. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, thank you for being here with me today. And I know we'll be back in the sanctuary soon. We're praying for everybody. I love you very much. And I thank God for you. Keep myself and my wife and, and in our family lifted up in prayer because we're doing that for you. Be blessed in Jesus' name.